As beacons of hope in the 21st century, we aspire to be men of integrity through the fear of God, hard work, and perseverance. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2022 graduating class of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. This afternoon, your chairpersons are myself, Ms. Abraham, and Mr. Kenneth Dubisset. Mr. Pearson Stroud, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. Mr. Christopher Belfon, acting principal of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, and Mrs. Belfon. Reverend Joachim Philip, Pastor Wallace Memorial Church. Mrs. Colin Eben Marshall, District 4 Education Officer. Dr. James Young, Feature Address Speaker. Other specially invited guests, parents and guardians, members of staff, graduates, media representatives, ladies Good afternoon and welcome to our graduation exercise for 2022. At this, at this time, I invite one and all to stand with me as we have the national anthem accompaniment played. Thank you. Please remain standing as we celebrate with the graduating class of 2022, guided by the theme as beacons of hope in the 21st century, we aspire to be men of integrity through the fear of God, hard work and perseverance. Let us, ladies and gentlemen, now acknowledge the entrance of the graduates.
with them, we will now humble our hearts and reverence God as those who must lead well must learn to follow him. So I invite us to stand together once again and we extend the invitation to Reverend Joy Kim Philip who would lead us in the invocation and blessings of the rings. and good afternoon the blessings of the ring will be out for this time but let's pray as we invite the presence of almighty god who has been very gracious to us as a people and as an institution i believe he has, his hands was outstretched let's bow our hearts together gracious and ever loving father we thank you now for your presence we thank you for your mighty hand upon these graduates. We thank you for their families as they celebrate this milestone. We pray that you will continue to bless, to encourage, to strengthen them as they journey through life successfully. Lord, we thank you that we would have granted the strength and the tenacity to come to this milestone I pray that this ceremony will be one of excellence in every aspect and that this graduation will be blessed by you. We invite your holy presence to be with us this evening and continue to bless this noble institution, Grenada Boys Secondary School. May you uh, continue, Lord, to give them years ahead of successfully educating our nation's children. May the blessing of the Lord be upon each and every one of you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Philip. Please be seated. We now invite to the podium acting principal, Mr. Christopher Belfon who has been in this capacity as acting principal on behalf of Mr. Philip Thomas from 2021, and Mr. Thomas has been unwell then. Mr. Christopher Belfon. Thank you very much, Ms. Abraham, Mr. Pearson Shroud, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture, Reverend Joachim Philip, Pastor Wallace Memorial Church, Mrs. Colin Eben Marshall, District 4 Education Officer, other special invited guests, parents, guardians, members of staff, Guardians, media representatives, ladies, and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome and good afternoon. Good afternoon. The GBSS family congratulates the class of 2021-2022 for successfully making the graduation list 
and for being awarded the privilege to graduate. Gentlemen, your efforts, hard work, and dedication have paid off. Put your, your hands together for them. <clears throat> Due to its unavoidability and prevalence, education holds particular potent position in society. Up until the age of adulthood, individuals will have spent most of their lives in schools. According to Don Bush et al, 1996, schools are charged with developing a properly trained and socialized citizenry with a focus on teaching the cognitive and technical skills to perform societal occupations. In fact, the International Labour Organization, the ILO, postulated that the three most important pillars on which to build in order to ensure that one can be employable and remain employable and marketable in any situation are education, vocational training, and lifelong learning. Today, employers are demanding that workers in the 21st century must possess not only academic skills and the soft skills, but also technical and vocational skills which are suited to their business. Hence, a person can have the best resume and impressive academic achievements, yet the question will be asked, what can you do? The ILO in continues to explain that the 21st century workplace is increasingly a modern environment requiring a different approach to work and a different mindset from workers and a clear recognition of the foundation skills. These foundation skills include reading, writing, speaking, listening, creative thinking, problem solving, arithmetic, negotiation, leadership, teamwork, cultural diversity, self-esteem, self-management and responsibility. At the GBSS, we believe that we adequately provide the opportunities for students to acquire these rudimentary skills which all workers must attain with a certain standard if they are to be successful in a work environment. As it stands currently, the education system presents itself as a neutral body based on meritocratic principles providing equal opportunity for all. While this particular structure may appear ideal in reality, however, it contradicts the ILO's philosophy by empowering the academic students, while the skills-oriented students in many instances turn out as failures. It is apparent that most of the students who do not complete secondary education are the skilled-oriented students. They are unfortunately referred to as school dropouts. In fact, while some students will sail smoothly through the current system and achieve high pass rates at the CSEC level, there are those who do not even make it to Form 5. And the question is, why? This situation, ladies and gentlemen, must be examined closely. These so-called school dropouts therefore appear in the eyes of the public as delinquents are unintelligent. I will hasten to say, however, that many of these skilled-oriented individuals, though struggled academically, later move on to the New Life Organization Institution, the New Law as we call it, where they acquire vocational skills and for the most part are well poised in society where they earn a living via self-employment or employment with different companies. This, I believe, is a clear indication 
and a critical time for all stakeholders to re-examine the educational structure so that it can better accommodate students that are skilled oriented. As it stands currently, all students, in spite of their mental construct, are forced into an academic institution. I believe, therefore, that the system is doing a great injustice to the students that are skills oriented. More attention must be given to skill based students. I propose, therefore, that at the primary level, educational assessments be done to determine the learning trajectory of all students so that they can be channeled into a learning institution that will facilitate their learning abilities. I challenge the new Minister of Education and the new administration to focus on building technical schools which will help to resolve the issue of school dropouts. The mission of the GBSS is very much in line with the ILO's philosophy of having vocational training as a major inclusion within the education system. Our mission is to deliver quality education through a highly trained and professional staff so that every student is afforded the opportunity to develop his talents and true potential. With this notion, ladies and gentlemen, every student at the GBSS is given equal opportunity to develop his talents and the true potential. The school offers 27 subjects, which include both academic and technical subjects. Along with these, there are opportunities for students to participate in clubs and other extracurricular activities. Considering our mission statement to deliver quality education through a highly trained and professional staff, I can truly say that our staff is well on its way to be considered highly trained. The GBSS staff comprise of 54 teachers, out of which 36 hold a bachelor's degree, a master's degree or a doctorate, and the others are in pursuit of their first degree. I believe the, the GBSS staff deserve a round of applause. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the staff of the GBSS is ambitious, highly proficient and hardworking. This is in no way projecting that the staff is a perfect one because surely academic qualification is not all there is to becoming a successful teaching staff. Having said this, it is my duty as the acting principal to appeal on behalf of the teachers who are not regularized. Ladies and gentlemen, having teachers working for as much as 10 years without permanent, a permanent appointment can be considered nothing less than exploitation. I have heard the plight of frustration from some of our teachers who would like to upgrade themselves academically. Others believe that the time has come when they need to possess assets and others want to move on in some way or another. Unfortunately, a policy of non-regularization has kept teachers in a quandary and is hindering them from pursuing their career paths and achieving their life's goals. This situation, ladies and gentlemen, makes me very uncomfortable. Out of a staff of 54, 12 teachers are temporary. We also have five contract workers who have been with us for three and four years. I am therefore making a special appeal to the new administration to make regularization of teachers and contract workers a priority. Let me hasten in this same breath to congratulate the new administration of Grenada, Kariku and Peter Martinik on their victory at the last election and to thank the Prime Minister for speedily addressing the issue of dark salaries and more so pension. Well, of course, let us give our administration, a new administration, a lusty round of applause for that initiative. 
The GBSS also benefited tremendously from maintenance and repairs of the physical plant in recent times. I was also informed that further repair work will be done, including the driveway leading up to the school during the vacation period. We can safely say that the facility is in a condition that is conducive for teaching and learning, notwithstanding that more has to be done in the area of resources. One of our computer labs is yet to be furnished with computers. Also, our clothing and textile room needs to be equipped and facilitated with a teacher. We are appealing to the ministry to assist in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, the GBSS continues to dominate the male division in the secondary school games. We are the sporting giant of the tri-island state of Grenada, Karikou, and Pitimatnik. The inter-college championship, which is usually held over a three-day period, this year was considered a special, a special one and was conducted as a one-day event. In spite of the many challenges and the short notice, our athletes, guided by highly experienced coaching staff, brought home a well-deserved victory. Let us give our athletes a lusty round of applause. Some of the outstanding performances came from Kyle Victor, Ethan Sam, and Cameron Mathlin, among others. This victory, ladies and gentlemen, was a team effort. In this light, the GBSS congratulates the efforts of the athletes for their hard work and dedication and for making our school proud at our last intercall meet. A special thank you is extended to the coaching staff and the hardworking support staff of the GBSS. We also must say thanks to the new PTA teacher, well, teacher, parent, sorry, let me take it again. We also must say thanks to the new Parent Teachers Association led by Mr. Lyndon Bob for the outstanding support. <laughs> Special thank you goes out to our main uh, sponsor, Najiko. The GBSS has partnered with Najiko Insurance and has never regretted it. Najiko has played a tremendous role in financing the main aspects of the preparation leading up to the games, including uniforms, meals, transportation, among others. To all other institutions who contributed, we say thank you. <clears throat> Our annual athletic sports meet this year was also held on a scaled down level. The games were well executed as usual. The students were excited to participate in the athletics meet after a three year break as a result of COVID-19 protocols and union work to rule policies. In fact, it was the first experience of a GBSS sports, of a GBSS sports meet for many of our students, even those at the form four level. Once again, thanks to the hardworking staff for their efforts in helping to make the games a success. Immediately after school closures, or the lockdowns, as we would say, we have been made privy to a series of videos involving our boys displaying deviant behaviors and the misconduct on the streets of St. George's, Tantin, and its surrounding areas. I want to make it clear to the public that the GBSS exclusively disassociates itself from such uncivilized practices. In fact, the majority of our students are decent, well brought up boys who display good discipline. Unfortunately, we are disgraced ever so often by just a handful of misguided individuals. The school has a zero tolerance policy for the possession and use of weapons on and off this, the school compound involving GBSS boys. We have been partnering with the police department in this regard. And let me say thanks to the Royal Grenada Police Force for their speedy response whenever they are called upon. We are also eternally grateful to the Almighty God for helping us to keep our compound safe for students and teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, the GBSS continues to be counted as, to be counted, sorry, as one of the top school on the Tri-Island State. From the CPA results, we will be welcoming 140 and 40 new students 
And of course, we are sending out 130 students. So this will leave us with approximately 750 students for the next school year. As I conclude, we say thank you to the graduation committee and all the other subcommittees who have worked hard to make this graduation ceremony a success. Heartfelt thank you is extended to the rehearsal committee. Um, I, sometimes I hesitate to call names, but this committee, we have to call the names. Mr. Sipolit, Ms. Gabriel, Mr. Mr. Joseph, among others. Thank you to the, to the management of the Trade Center for affording us the opportunity to hold our graduation ceremony, even in the midst of a pandemic. Spe special thanks to the Ministry of Education for the support and encouragement. To you graduates, we say thank you for staying the course. Let me use this opportunity to wish everyone a memorable and enjoyable evening. Welcome all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Belfon. Graduates, take pride in how far you've come. Have faith in how far you can go. But don't forget to enjoy the journey. Michael Josephson. Here at the GBSs, we are blessed with a talented young men. And some of these young men are about to showcase their talents here this afternoon. And the first set of young men are going to be doing a dramatic presentation entitled Grades, written by, written, sorry, and directed by Dr. Christopher Roger Williams. Let's put our hands together and welcome these young men to do this dramatic presentation. Yeah, man. That's my son, Nate. Big up you. Oh, 
say something about it, I can see it. At least I try and try. <laughs> Boy, come on, watch me step back over here, wait, wait. See you. I'm oh, done with it yet.
take you all the time on weekends to lessen the stress from school and stuff. I don't believe in that. I don't believe. What I could do about that? If they don't believe it, they'll do it. Watch it, 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 And of course, we have our writer and director, Dr. Christopher Roger Williams. Let's show some appreciation.
As I said before, here at the GBSS, we are blessed with a talented young men. I now invite on stage Kenel Roberts to do a violin solo entitled Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and welcome Kenel.
How come Aaron on stage? Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This event is all but celebration. It is a time for looking back on lessons learned, adventures shared, bright moments filled with special meaning as we aspire to be commendable young men. Yet this is a time for saying goodbye to old friends, to good times we have known and shared together. A time for packing away memories, treasures for tomorrow without any sorrow. Yet again, this is a time for looking forward, a time to set new goals, to dream new dreams, to try our wings and see what lies beyond. Three different situations in one occasion as we transition from boys to young men. We thank you, the parents, guardians, and teachers for guiding us as we aspire to be beacons of the 21st century, as we aspire to be men of integrity, through the fear of God, hard work, and perseverance. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. We do have another poet this afternoon, and I now invite on stage Niall Adlam to do a poem entitled The Journey. And again, that poem was written by Niall himself. Let us welcome Niall, please. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Education is not just about books. It is a journey that never ends. The doors simply revolve as we exit one stage to the next. School is not just for academics. It is about learning to navigate life and friendships, teamwork, respect, and discipline. Teachers don't just teach subjects. They inspire impressionable minds, build creativity and character, test and push us to our limits. This phase of our journey has come to an end. We aim to walk through the gates better than we entered. No longer boys of integrity, no longer boys, but wise enough to face the challenges life will inevitably bring. Beacons of hope, they have been ignited by this institution. As we move unarmed with knowledge, understanding, the will to preserve and the fear of God. Most importantly, most importantly, gratitude. Gratitude to this great institution, our teachers and the staff for lightening the fire we now choose to carry as we move on. On to the next phase and stage as our new journey now begins. Thank you. Okay, let's show some appreciation for all our talented young men this afternoon. We now invite on stage our graduating class of 2022 to do a rendition entitled, Goodness of God.
Jesus is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. My life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Is running after, it's running after me. I lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so. May be seated. Let's put our hands together for our talented students, students of the 2022 graduating class. As El Philip has successfully journeyed through five years at the GBSS, five years pregnant with new information to learn. Five years pregnant with innovative teaching and learning strategies. Five years pregnant with insurmountable challenges and crises to navigate. Dr. Noel Woodruff, president of the Congress WBN states crisis is God's pathway to exiting. Just remember God, Noah, the ark, and the flood. Today as Azel, our valedictorian for the GBSS 2022 graduating class, represents 
his fellow graduates as having successfully navigated, we want to warmly receive him. But before he comes to the podium, I want to direct your reflections to a video segment focusing on Azel Philip. Let us embrace it now. Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Akeda Kallis, a teacher at the St. Matthews Catholic School. During Azel's tenure at our school, I was his grade six teacher. I remember Azel as a disciplined, brilliant and motivated student. I am elated to learn that you have excelled in your years at the Grenada Boys Secondary School, Azel. Congratulations, Azel. You have made yourself and everyone proud. Continue to bloom where you are planted. And I am Mr. Paul Marshall, the acting principal of the St. Matthews Catholic School. I have known Azil for quite a long time at our school as well, and I'm, I'm happy to know that he has bloomed where he was planted. And I am also proud that he has taken our name to a higher level, and he is now in the Valley Victoria at the GBSS. So, as we want to say on our behalf and on behalf of all the teachers here, thank you again and good morning, Mario Plante. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's go. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's put our hands together for Azam. And in this vein, let us continue to receive Azel, this time as a valedictorian of the graduating class of 2022, to deliver the valedictorian, valedictory, sorry, address. Let's warmly receive Azel Philip. Mr. Pearson Stroud, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. Mr. Christopher Belfon, Acting Principal of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Reverend Joachim Phillip, Pastor Wallace, Pastor of Wallace Memorial Church. Mrs. Curlin Avon Marshall, District 4 Education Officer. Dr. James Young, Feature Address Speaker. Mrs. Marisha Charles Alexis, Curriculum Development Officer, Modern Languages. Dr. Raymond Gallo and Mr. Joseph Noel, representing the GBSS Alumni International Foundation. Mr. Lyndon Bob, President, GBSS Parent Teachers Association. Past Headmaster of the GBSS, Mr. Victor Ashby and Mrs. Ashby. Ms. Maureen Joseph, Chief Invigilator, GBSS CSEC 2022. Other special invited guests, parents and guardians, members of staff, graduates, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. According to the famous American author, Oscar Wilde, success is no accident. It is the hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and importantly, love of what you are doing or learning to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you this afternoon representing the graduating class of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. I am honored and indeed grateful to be given the role of valedictorian in the ceremony of recognition of this prodigious group of young men who are the beacons of hope for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, graduates, what a journey this has been for all of us. In September 2017, all the young men who sit before you enter the gates of the GBSS to commence our education at this prestigious institution. As a student in such a novel and vast environment, 
I was overwhelmed yet filled with pride and ambition. I have always held great respect for this institution, but to actually be given the opportunity to wear this tie and uniform heightened my sense of pride and dignity. Over the five-year timeline, the cliche can be used, it was a journey and a half. From the time we set foot on the corridors and were greeted by our initial class headmistresses, Miss Abraham, Miss Lord, Miss Smart, Miss Noel, Mrs. Noel, Miss Rubin, and Miss Hines, we were inundated with endless projects and assignments by our respective teachers, and in particular, our English teachers. We started off as foreigners from our respective primary school facilities, given that the level of socializing was relatively low. I can clearly recall the times I would see the principal, Mr. Thomas, or the vice principal, Messrs. Belfon and Dubisset, patrolling the corridors like officers, looking into every classroom, sometimes with a smile or a, or a straight face, identifying little faults in our hair, tie and pants length, or the color of our shoes, and above all, making sure that all the necessary school protocols were being followed. We thank you for your astute guidance, messieurs. As we progressed through the higher forms and got comfortable with our environment, the video games popularized the classroom like diseases, and the minor fights started occurring as major fan events in the classrooms. Sadly, we became more and more distracted. When focus is lost, the entire mindset is thrown off track. The ambition for success disappears. The drive to accomplish a goal becomes mentally blocked away. Mercifully, our attitudes, mentality, and behavior changed. And not surprisingly, many of us began to experience improvement in our performances. Life was normal as we thrived at the third form level until disaster struck in the form of the COVID-19 virus. We were all affected and forced to remain confined to our respective households. The possible return to the classroom to interact with our beloved teachers and peers was barely envisioned. We were converted to the online platforms where teaching and learning took place for much of our third and fourth form tenure. At the Form 5 level, the final level of our academic and GBSS lives, we were granted the opportunity to once again experience intercall games as we engage in friendly but fierce rivalry with our peers for the championship. As, we, as a first time experience for most of us in Form 5, including myself, it was hectic, unforgettable, and one of the proudest moments I've ever experienced while being a part of this great institution. I would like to recognize the outstanding athletes among us. Who can forget the magnificent feats of our indomitable stalwarts, such as Colin Alexander, Devonnie Ferguson, Niall Adlam, and Tegan Peterkin? There were all soldiers in the sporting arena who battled for supremacy and emerged as victors on that day. Not only were we given opportunities to be successful in the sporting arena, but our tenure at the GBSS also opened up pathways for us to realize our talents in diverse fields. We fondly remember our in-house literary activities and the keen competition it provided in diverse areas such as a monologue competition. Niall Adlam, Raven Clark, and CJ Modest emerged as the undoubted champions on that day. We recognize also other aspiring luminaries among us today in the persons of Elijah Clark, who won the GBSS alumni writing competition at the senior level. We salute Jerry Infante, our math prodigy, and who can forget our body musicians, Kine Roberts, Bradley Allen, Niall Adlam, Jerem Sharp, and Rishon Harris. Fellow graduates, I thank all of you for the wonderful experiences and camaraderie you afforded us all in what has turned out to be a most challenging academic journey. To all our teachers, we express deepest gratitude for, us, for the leadership, love, and care you extended to us. 
We know that it has not been easy for you, particularly as you were tasked to straddle both the virtual and face-to-face -face platforms, as you work to guide us with our SBAs, as well as prepare us for CSEC exams. Special thanks to our form teachers, Mr. Kelvis Joseph, Mr. Sinclair, Ms. Emmons, and Mrs. Alexis, who guided us on this final part of our journey. No amount of praise is too much to bestow on all our teachers. We, we, extend, we extend our profound appreciation to the teachers who worked with us in preparing us for our graduation. Thank you, Mrs. Hippolyte, Ms. Gabriel, Ms. Lord, Mr. Kelvis Joseph, and Dr. Patrick. Fellow graduates, join me in extending a lusty round of applause for all our teachers. Deepest gratitude to our parents and guardians who have supported us and continue to love and guide us as we, as we prepare to face the challenges beyond the walls of the classroom. We know that we have often caused more sighs than delight, yet you never wavered in your unconditional love for us. Fellow graduates, join me in thanking our dear parents and guardians. <clears throat> Finally, fellow graduates, as we take leave of the shelter of our noble institution, let us be mindful of the inspirational words of our graduation theme. However, we can only be beacons of hope in the 21st century if we hold fast to the teachings of the Almighty God. In our aspirations to be men of integrity, we must ground our ambitions and drive for success in God. Among us are the future doctors, lawyers, lecturers, political leaders, and entrepreneurs. Remember our motto, non palma sine labore, we must, however, acknowledge that our, our abiding faith and hope in God is what will steer us through our darkest moments. God, in God, we can do all things. Without him, we are nothing. For as the apostle points out in Acts 17, verse 28, in him we live and move and have our being. We cannot help but thank God for seeing us through what has been a most interesting journey. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for witnessing today what is for us graduates the start of another journey. May the grace and peace of God be with us all. I thank you. Thank you, Azel. We now invite on stage Mr. Pearson Stroud to assist with the distribution of certificates. Mr. Pearson Stroud. Let's get to the... Trevor on Friday. <laughs> Quincy George.
Jadon Francis. Josie Marest. Sion Smith. Josh Sylvester. Lenroy Walcott. Jerem Sharp. Chasm Walters. Jordan Griffith. Angelo Oliver. Jaheim Stanislaus. Francis Ronaldo Smith to Mikey Caesar. Joshua Sylvester, Joel Filbert, Michael Alexander. Rondell James, Javon Cyrus, Javon Cyrus, Andrew Bethel. Nickel Batiste, Joseph Paris, Jethro Cox. Jamal Greenwich, <laughs> Lyndon Tico, <laughs> Javonte Moreno.
Cameron Frederick. Samuel Morris. Fred Barrington. Anthony Celestine. Evan Noel. Kai John. Timothy Price. Kinel Roberts, Bradley Aline, Deshaun Williams. R. Cameron Rubin. Jada Jones. Rashid Bishop. Rashid Bishop. Daryl Phillip. Aaron Alexander. Kyle San Bernardo. Zena George. Isaiah Chase. Jelani Edwards. Anil Abraham. Joshua Richard. Brandon Murray. Mohammed Haji. Gandhi James. Roldan Jurakan. Sylvan (laughs) 
Joshua Kutena. CJ Modest. Rishon Harris. Sewell Devonish. Tegon Peterkin. Trevin Houston. Javel Noel. Javel Noel. AJ Church. Ethan Mitchell, Jerome Lambert, Sidoni Francois. Quentin Wise, Ethan Williams, Videl Charles. Aaron Benjamin, Lamon Douglas, Derek Kalonji Brooks Smith Lowe. Raven Clark, <laughs> Kenyon Swan, <laughs> Josiah Ross. Zikel Jacob, Nathaniel Phillip, Noah Philip, <laughs> Jerry Infante, <laughs> Gabrielle Jeleno. Azel Philip, Kelvin Francis, Kelvin Francis, Kelvin Francis. 
Rafael Livingston. Walter Passy. Leon Andrews. Terrell Hosford. Ashton Williams. Darius Morris. <laughs> Lyndon Richards. <laughs> Noah Joseph. Colin Alexander, <laughs> Anthony Modesto Jr. <laughs> Devonnie Ferguson. Donzel Noel Cameron Harry Dante Otway Shama Alexander, <laughs> Amir Fletcher, <laughs> Jared Skeet. Cordell Francis, <laughs> Niall Adlam, Dante Williams, Dante Williams, Tevin Giddens, Hassan Francois. Kyle Victor, Sydney Buckmeyer, DeAndre Passy, Paisody, sorry, DeAndre Paisody. Daniel Morgan, <laughs> Elijah Clark, <laughs> this afternoon the following students have graduated but they are not present with us this afternoon. 
We have Jamie Chetram, Kentroy Ross, Mohammed Sheikh, and Karen Sharp. <laughs> Mrs. Shroud, we graciously thank you this afternoon. Okay, let's put our hands again for our boys on receiving their certificates. At this time, we ready ourselves to receive Dr. James Young, who is a Grenadian national and old boy of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. While at the GBSS, he held the title of the deputy head boy for the period 2000 to 2001. Mr. Young holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Education, Testing, Measurement, and Evaluation from the University of the West Indies Cavill Campus. He is currently employed as the Item Bank Manager at the Caribbean Examination Council, where he has responsibility for coordinating the efforts of all measurement and evaluation officers content specialists and editorial staff to ensure a fully resourced item bank. He is a passionate educator and, as, and assessment specialist who is constantly seeking innovations in assessment in the fast changing technological landscape and leveraging the technology to ensure continuous improvement in measurement and evaluation. He has taught science and mathematics at the secondary level for nine years and had a short stint as an assistant lecturer in the science education at the TA Marichaux Community College. Let us warmly receive Dr. James Young, who is our feature speaker. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom will your days be many, and years will be added to your life. Proverbs chapter 9, verses 10 to 11. Mr. Preston Stroud, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sport, and Culture, I believe we have an honorable senator here today, uh, Quince Britton, we want to acknowledge you. <laughs> Mr. Christopher Belfon, principal acting of GBSS and Mrs. Belfon. Reverend Joachim Philip, pastor of Wallace Memorial Church. Mrs. Curline Aban Marshall, District 4 Education Officer. Mrs. Marisha Charles Alexis, Curriculum Development Officer for the Modern Languages, Dr. Raymond Gallo, and Mr. Joel, Joseph Noel, sorry, representing the GBSS Alumni International Foundation, Mr. Lyndon Bob, President of the GBSS Parent Teachers Association, other special invited guests, parents and guardians, members of staff, graduates, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed a privilege and an honor 
to have been afforded this opportunity to speak to such an astute group of young men on this momentous occasion, given that I come from such a stock of capable and successful alumni. I have such precious memories and friendships from within the walls of the GBSS that the feeling to be back here in this capacity is quite surreal. And I hope to share some valuable insights in the next few moments. I speak today as if to speak to myself 21 years ago. So as I look into the sea of elite gentlemen, I see strength. I see hope. I see creativity. I see leaders. I see vigor. In fact, I see an army charged and ready to change the narrative that is currently pervading our society regarding young men, and more so, men in general. I see a set of young men who embody and shall continue to embody the values entrusted to them by the GBSS, leaving these walls today as beacons of hope in the 21st century, aspiring to be men of integrity through the fear of God, hard work, and perseverance. I pause at this time to congratulate each of you for making it to this phase and transitioning to the next. It is testimony that you have persevered thus far, and we are confident that you will continue to do so if you hold strong to the values and principles instilled in you. I would like for us to give a round of applause to the staff and principal of this institution for the role they have played in shaping the lives of these young men. And kudos to you parents, guardians, and well-wishers. Indeed, raising leaders still takes a community effort. Now, I find this theme quite fitting. And indeed, as I reflected on it, I said it is quite heavy and of great substance. And it testifies to the caliber of individuals now transitioning into taking their places as significant contributors to the development and sustainability of our dear Grenada, Karakou, and Petit Martinique, and by extension, our Caribbean region. It is indeed my hope, as I share the following points, that it will resonate with you, that you have a charge that requires you to focus on being that beacon that you are, and to persevere in doing so in the midst of all circumstances that you may face in this life. You each have a personal responsibility to act upon that which has been shared and will continue to be shared with you to ensure that your families, communities, or their country are all better, not worse. I said better because of you. Firstly, let's talk about a beacon. A light that is set in a visible position, which has a purpose of giving direction, guidance, and warning. The beacon is set in a visible position. Let me ask this question. If a light is placed below a bed, will it provide light to the whole house? The obvious answer is no. Would you take the light from a lighthouse and use it to illuminate the stadium? Of course not. You may wonder why I ask these questions. Gentlemen, all, these questions are about purpose and suitability. You must ensure that you are correctly positioned according to purpose that a light entrusted to you is visible to all and not hidden, 
Do not try to be what you are not gifted nor motivated to be. Each of you has a unique and distinct purpose that no one else can live out for you. However, this requires you to be honest with yourself. There is an old adage that says, to thine own self be true. What are you passionate about? What are you good at? How can you truly contribute to society? Each of you may fight for different causes. You may enter different careers. Only I say to you, let all causes be for the upliftment of yourselves, families, and country. And in doing so, ensure that the principles you embrace align with the fear of God and his wisdom. Beacons, gentlemen, you cannot desire to make a change in this world and hide yourself. You cannot keep your mouth shut when things are going amiss and expect change to happen. You are entrusted with the light to shine in the darkness. So shine, shine, shine. Stand for fairness. Shine, I say. Shine. Speak up against wrong and injustice. When you embody as well as speak the godly principles, you will be shining. You will be giving guidance. And you will be fulfilling purpose as leaders in this 21st century. You may ask yourself, because I often do it, am I really a beacon of hope in this 21st century? If it is that I am, how do I let this beam of light shine so that the hopeless can have hope and that the fearful can gain courage, that positive change can be experienced? As I began, by quoting Proverbs 9, 10 to 11. I believe that we can all appreciate that wisdom is all around us and it is ours for the taking. It is a choice. Today and every day, wisdom and folly are before us. I say to you, gentlemen, choose wisdom. Light in the form of wisdom has been bestowed upon you, and I heard it in your speeches, in your poems, and even in the drama, to demonstrate what principles you must embrace. That has been shared with you in many instances, even though you may not have given it much thought. The values according to God's principles have been shared in many ways through the church, your teachers, principal, classmates, family, wherever you go. I want to speak of these nuggets of light coming from a place that even if you never listen to any of your teachers here during your tenure at the GBSS, you cannot escape them. They originate from our dear beloved school song. And I was happy to be reminded that it was written and composed in 1929. And when I reflect on the words of that school song, I say, these were visionaries. These were lights that lit our way and paved the way for us to be able to shine for others. In fact, I felt that if all I did was to come here and recite our beloved school song, I would have done significant justice in reminding you about the principles you should embrace, which will increase the probability of your success and ensure you are an effective contributor to our society. These nuggets have helped me, and I'm talking here from personal testimony, in challenging times in life, to press on, to advocate for others, to celebrate others, to work hard, to persevere. For example, I'm constantly reminded of 
the also ran and the champion. Each one can but do his best. This right here mean, reminds us that all that is required of us is that we do our best, even if it does not result in us winning. It is about us not settling for mediocrity within ourselves, but rather to excel in every aspect of our lives. If you have a business, let your business be built upon the principles of excellence and great service, fairness, respect, and humility. If you are an employee, serve with diligence. Learn about the product or service you provide and ensure that you are excellent in delivery. If you are a doctor or a lawyer, consider the poor and the needy and treat individuals with dignity and respect. I say, don't rob anybody. If you are a teacher, serve with joy those students entrusted to your care, knowing that your work does not only affect the current generation, but many generations to come. Your diligence, or might I say neglect, can have significant effect on our present citizens and those to come, whether for the good or for the bad. Gentlemen, I love this part of our school song. It says, the slacker is folly's tool. We often go on a high note there. But when you experience folly and find yourself engrossed in folly, ask yourself, what slackness am I in? I hear these words in my head often. Woe is me when I slack, for surely folly shall find me. Use your time wisely and in areas of upliftment that will assist with providing for your family and contributing meaningfully to our society. Read of things beneficial, Participate in community-oriented groups. Listen to those who have stood for humanity. Build yourself up. Grads, you have been singing and reminded constantly that endeavor enhances merit so that you have known, and I'm only presenting this as a reminder, that hard work is what will increase your chances and opportunities for success. When you embrace these as not just mere words in a song, but rather principles to live by, you allow the light to shine, and it makes the path clearer, not only for yourself, but for those around you. As I reflected upon my tenure at this wonderful institution, I can't but help I can't help but share a few words written on my report book, which I often review. Trust me, I carried it with me everywhere that I go. I still have it. It is clean, and it is in that nice plastic cover that Miss Lord and so on would have told us, make sure it's in. It was beautiful, and it's clean. Mr. Victor Ashby, then principal, once wrote, a few simple words in my report book at a time when my average fell. These were his words, simple. James is capable of doing much more. Zero in and excel, full stop. You don't know the impact that that had on me. I have never forgotten those words. And I share those words with you, gentlemen, today. Zero in and excel. It is all that is being asked of you as beacons of hope, of leaders of today, as leaders of today and tomorrow. Zero in in whatever area of contribution to society. And I say to you, excel. As a beacon instilled with the aforementioned principles, by merely being a part of this noble institution and being reminded of it every time you either listen to or sing the school song, it is imperative that you nourish, embrace, and cherish these guiding principles to your everyday living. These are sorry, and cherish these 
as guiding principles to your everyday living. Do not let your light become darkness. Do not let your love become hatred or your peace become war. Don't let your wisdom become folly or your faith become doubt. Don't let your courage become fear. I must say to you, as I would say to myself 21 years ago, if I had the opportunity, you will experience challenges. You will doubt yourself, and others will doubt you and your abilities. Challenges will come. There's no questioning that. What is important is that you understand your responsibility to remain steadfast and committed to being that light. Take that resolve with you today. Be resolute in your commitment to building lives and not tearing them down. In being leaders and champions of humanity and not menaces to society. Do not be afraid of the challenges. When is a beacon mostly seen? Is it in broad daylight? Or is it in the midst of darkness? As beacons, know that your duty is to stand firm and strong in the midst of adversity. Do not give up because of challenges, but use those as opportunities to shine brighter. You have heard, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But I say to you today, when the darkness comes, shine brighter. Don't give up. As the words of the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Gentlemen, when hatred comes, love. When wrongdoing, ill will, bad mind, and malice comes, pardon that ignorance. When others hurt, you seek to heal. When others seek to tear down, you focus on building up. Be that employee who does not waste the resources of the employer, who uses the time effectively. Be that son, that brother, that father, that will fight for the right without question, without pause as the words of one of my favorite songs written by Joe Darian, which I heard here, I think it was in 1997 or 98. And the world will be better for this. That one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with one last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star. Let that be you. Continue to strive. Press on to integrity, devotion to upliftment of humanity, improvement of your family, community, and country. I say, press on. So yes, I've said much about beacons, their purpose, and standing firm in the midst of challenges, and the need to base all of life on the acquisition of the wisdom of God, his knowledge, and understanding. Gentlemen, you have received an awesome foundation, a platform for you to build upon and catapult into making positive impact on our society one day at a time. What should you do even now? Stay close to those who continually feed these nuggets of life into your soul. You may have heard iron sharpens iron. Choose your circle wisely. Get hooked onto mentors, all the men who are role models. I'm sure some of your teachers here will gladly listen and provide wisdom and strength if you come back to them for help during difficult times. Get help. Sign up for therapy if you're struggling. You are not a sissy if you seek help. Let's break that mentality. There is something in our society where men are looked down upon if they seek help from others. That is wrong. And that has been killing us. The reason you would seek help is because you are real. 
you are humble, you are intent, you want to succeed, you want to heal, you want to learn, you want to grow so that you can glow. I remember my then physics and additional mathematics teacher, Mr. Samuel Antoine. He was a role model and someone who shared wisdom and gave insights to other areas of life, even while teaching us science and math. Those moments of sharing were invaluable and assisted me at crucial times in my life. And as I see it, we should all in life continue to surround ourselves with those who believe in the beauty of our dreams and those who will be truthful to us in love. Guard yourself. There are those who will laugh with you. But when you are in difficult times, they would not come to help you. So guard your heart and surround yourself with those who genuinely care. Stay connected to that which fans the flame of your beacon, the fear of the Lord, the individuals with wisdom and genuine care for your well-being and growth. But might I say this, as I reflected on preparation for this delivery, I recognize this. As human beings, we are the one creature that can short circuit our own light. Who can sabotage our own selves and actually do so with joy until, until we experience the pain of our own self-sabotage. Gentlemen, I beg of you as I would beg myself 21 years ago if I had the opportunity to do so, do not deceive yourself. Living for short-term pleasure will bring long-term pain. Save yourselves the trouble. Be honest with yourself. Seek truth and wisdom. Stay connected to the source. Reconnect if you have disconnected. And when your light is dwindling, because you may have become distracted, become greedy, become hateful, become envious, etc. It is time to reconnect to the source of light. Seek help. Persevere toward and protect your purpose at all costs. Nourishing that light ensures that you will be consistent, reliable, dependable. Let's change the narrative. You young men will be leaders and exceptional in all of life's journey. As I conclude, gentlemen, beacons, leaders, remember the following. Position yourself appropriately through honest self-reflection. Focus on excelling in every area of your life. Do not short circuit your own light and if you do find yourself losing that light, get help, check yourself. Stay connected to the source. Well, I focused on principles and not achievements for obvious reasons. Our society today is not suffering because of a lack of skill or intellectual ability. Our society is suffering because of an erosion of values and godly principles that would ensure that we are successful. I could say to you, and I will say to you, dream, take risks, etc. However, for too long our society has been and continues to measure and celebrate success mainly on academic achievement. Furthermore, with the emergence of social media, the parading of exceptional abilities, attributes, and experiences can make you feel that you are not doing much if you compare yourself to them. Now, it is okay, and I welcome that we should congratulate persons on their various achievements. Don't get me wrong. But it is high time that we celebrate fairness celebrate purpose, celebrate excellence in whatever field individuals are in, whether permanent or temporary. While we celebrate the academics, we are, we are aware 
that many use their talents and abilities to destroy humanity. Brilliant minds have done a lot of that. So let this not be the case among you. You will be successful if you seek to excel in whatever you do and you bring that light. If you're a fisherman, because we need the fishermen, we need the sanitation workers. It's not just about the doctors and the lawyers, and we need them too. But we need everybody in whatever field that you are in to bring the light, to bring the respect, to bring the truth, to bring the honesty, to bring dignity and integrity. I charge you today to remember, and I smile when I saw in, our, in, the, in the program that that word was highlighted, or that phrase was highlighted in the school song. A truly great West Indies. Be this our constant aim. It takes each of you to go forth in confidence as beacons of light and continue to aspire to be men of integrity through the fear of God, hard work, and perseverance. In other words, gentlemen, non palma sine labore. God bless you all. Okay, let's put our hands together again for Dr. Young as we express our appreciation for his sharing with us. At this time, we want to express our appreciation, and so I invite graduate Joshua Sylvester, who would present the token of appreciation to Dr. Young. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Dr. Young. At this time, we want to recognize the, and acknowledge the presence of Senator Quince Britton, and we welcome you to our 2022 graduation ceremony and also wish you all the best in your new responsibilities. We will now have some special presentations and Ms. Abraham will lead us in this activity. Here at the GBSS, we acknowledge parents. We are grateful to parents. We, are, we appreciate parents. And uh, although we would like to give every parent here this afternoon a token of appreciation, it just, it's just not possible. So what the graduating class have done, they have decided to give two tokens of appreciation to a mother and to a father. And the mother that we have decided on this afternoon is, and of course that mother is representing all mothers here this afternoon. And this mother is Mrs. Nikisha Murray Monroe. And we now ask Brandon Murray to come up to present that token of appreciation to his mom. Ms. Nikisha.
Now the father that was chosen, it was very difficult because the father is always seen with the mother. So it, is, it was very difficult for us to just present it to the father alone. So this afternoon, on behalf of fathers, we are asking Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Roberts, and we invite Kinnell Roberts to present that token to his parents. We invite Mr. and Mrs. Roberts, Joseph Roberts on stage, please. Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Roberts. Okay, so Mr. Roberts is going to accept on behalf of, of himself and his wife. She's here, but uh, indisposed at the moment. On behalf of all the young men here this afternoon, we want to say a special thank you to all parents, fathers, mothers, guardians, a special thank you to all. The student with the very special responsibility to express appreciation and thanks is Elijah Clark. And so let us put our hands together as we welcome him, as he will do the vote of thanks. Senator Quint Britton, Mr. Per Mr. Person Stroud, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. Mr. Christopher Belfon, Acting Principal of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Reverend Joachim Philip, Pastor of the Wallace Memorial Church. Mrs. Carleen Aben Marshall, District 4 Education Officer. Dr. James Young, Feature Address Speaker. Mrs. Marisha Charles Alexis, Curriculum Development Officer, Modern Languages. Dr. Raymond Gallo, and Mr. Joseph Noel, representing the GBSS Alumni International Foundation. Mr. Lyndon Bubb, president of the GBSS Parent Teachers Association. Other specially invited guests, parents and guardians, members of staff, graduates, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am honored to have been chosen to give the vote of thanks on this momentous day on behalf of a GBSS graduating class of 2022. We could not have arrived at this moment were it not for the stalwart support from parents, teachers, friends, and well-wishers. To let this great assistance go unacknowledged would not be the GBSS way. And so, I am honored to be the voice to express our profound appreciation. First and foremost, we must express our gratitude to the almighty God who guided and protected us through what was undoubtedly unprecedented times in our corner of the world. During threatening situations, such as the scourge of the COVID-19 pandemic, God protected us and kept us safe. We say thank you to Reverend Joachim Philip 
for inviting God's presence with us this afternoon and for the blessing of our rings. We express our, pro we express our gratitude to Dr. James Young for sharing such intensely inspirational words with us. We assure you, sir, that long after we have left this place, your words of wisdom will resonate within us. Thank you, Mr. Pearson Strode, for your patience and the time you took from your busy schedule to distribute our certificates. We express heartfelt thanks to our parents. What would we do without you? You made the sacrifice to send us to school so that we could gain an education. You shelter us, keep us safe, and provide food to replenish our energy. Despite all the trouble we may have caused you, you never gave up on encouraging and supporting us. No words can truly express how grateful we are to you. We will continue to make you proud. To our teachers, we may not have been the best class to teach at times, but that never deterred you from believing in us. You not only taught us the concept that was necessary to pass our CSEC examinations, but also life lessons that we will remember. Mr. Joseph, our math and physics teacher, taught us to not take things at face value, to understand the process that allows conclusions to be made. Mr. St. Clair, our English teacher, taught us to work smart, to achieve our dreams and aspirations without overworking ourselves. This is just to name a few, since I am sure that if I were to elucidate all the lessons that we have learned from each teacher since Form 1, we would never make it to the dinner and bowl. Just know, just know, teachers, that we acknowledge your hard work and are proud to call you our educators. I would also like to show appreciation to my classmates. You have made the GBSS experience unforgettable for me. We may have had our ups and downs and a few fights. Okay, maybe more than a few. <laughs> However, just know that I am proud to acknowledge you as my former classmates and eternal brothers because that is what the GBSS experience is. It is a It is a brotherhood. We boarded the ship as perhaps complete strangers, but formed forever friendships and bonds as we grew together and surmounted hardship after hardship on this rough journey. We may have lost a few along the way who gave in to the challenges, but thankfully it was far from the majority. With the fear of God and determination, I can safely say we have survived this part of the journey. I do believe scriptural text, that the scriptural text, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, embodies everything our graduating class symbolizes. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling God in Christ Jesus. We forget the hardships of the past and continue forward to the future to achieve our goals. As I close, I wish to leave you with this, my fellow classmates. And I know that you have heard this many times from our teachers. I was there as well. Do not think of this achievement as though you have arrived. Education is a lifelong experience. You will never truly finish learning and facing hardships. Rather, View this experience as though as one part of a journey that you have survived. Think of this experience as one chapter of your life story and be ready to move on to the next chapter and to make that chapter even greater than the last. Remember, we are the beacon of hopes in the 21st century as we aspire to become men of integrity through the fear of God, hard work, and perseverance will surely see us through. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank each and every one for gracing us with your presence today. May God bless us all.
Okay, we thank you, Elijah. Graduates, I admonish you, be bold, be courageous, be your best, and when you leave here, don't you ever forget why you came here in the first place. We now invite the graduating class of 2021 to back on stage, and they will be coming back to do their graduation pledge, changing of tassels, and the school song. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the new graduating class of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Put your hands together for them. Now at this time, we will proceed to do the school song. We will have to do it a cappella, not having musical accompaniment. And so I'm requiring our new alumni to sing it with some oomph, right, some oomph. 
Okay, I also want to extend invitation to, of course, members of staff and all boys and all girls present. You join us in standing as we would sing the school song. It's at the back of the program. Uh, we will allow the new graduates of the GBSS to sing the last stanza. We will proceed um, singing the, the first, second, and third. Boys, are we ready? At study or recreation, in classroom or playing field, let those of each generation respect to tradition yield. The feats of fathers and brothers are beacons marking the way. The torch handed on by others, we must keep a light today. The price to the one who earns it, let this be a golden rule. Endeavor enhances merit, the slacker is folly's tool. The also ran and the champion, each one can but do his best. The winner's display depends on the efforts of all the rest. To be in the van is not all, for each has to play his role. The team wins the match at football, though one man must kick the goal. The prize to the one who earns it, let this be a golden rule. Endeavor enhances merit, the slacker is folly's tool. In term time or in vacation, uphold Alma Mater's name. Whatever the place or occasion, remember to play the game. To win and be sporting is easy, to lose with a smile is hard. And yet to the sportsman rarely, the game is its own reward. The prize to the one who earns it, let this be a golden rule. Endeavor enhances merit, the slacker is folly's tool. Graduates only. And when my days are over, our motto must still remain. The Lord in my God is a never, the highest we shall attain. A truly great West Indies, be this our constant aim. Some mountain is to the boundaries, a people is more than me. Everyone on the chorus, the Price to the one who earns it, let this be a golden rule. Endeavor enhances merit, the slacker is folly's tool. Put your hands together for them. Okay, at this time, we want to invite. We want to invite Reverend Joya Kim Philip to do the benediction for us. And we also ask, hey boys, we also ask Joseph Paris to ready himself after the benediction to present to Reverend Joya Kim a token of our appreciation. Benediction taken from Jude. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you blameless before the presence of his glory and great joy.
to the glory of God our Father and Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord, the glory, majesty, dominion, and power before all time, now, and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, we thank you again, Pastor Joachim. Okay, as we prepare to bring the curtains down on today's graduation exercise, from here we will conclude as follows. We will have the singing of the national anthem. We will share in that together. There will be a few announcements, and then we will have the recession of the graduates. After the recession of the graduates, we will have the, the official party, the, the parting, and then the rest of us. And I do ask for your full, fullest cooperation in those endeavors. Okay, so at this time, I invite us to uh, stand together as we would share in the singing of the national anthem. I believe we would have an accompaniment with that. Thank you. You may be seated, except the, of course, graduates. Just a few announcements, and um, particularly to the graduates, this one, there remain some uncollected um, dinner tickets, and you, those persons um, to whom that is concerned, you should engage with Miss or see Miss Lord after the ceremony. Uh, also, please note that the dinner, which begins at 7.30 p.m. this evening, um, will be at the Radisson Great Ballroom, and the Wall Street entrance will be used to access um, that space. I also inform our graduates and, of course, parents members of staff, um, well wishers, that um, this year, 2022, um, during the week of August 
the 10th and August, to August the 14th, the new alumni chapter of the GBSS, which is the GBSS Alumni International Foundation, and that spans a, a number of territories, particularly in the North America, engaging with the US, with, sorry, with Grenada. Um, so you have the, the, the you have Canada, you, um, US, and also UK and Grenada. So that um, combination of countries um, facilitating the new um, chapter, GBSS alumni chapter. And so they will have reunion activities in that week, in August, August 10th to the 14th. And I just quickly inform you of a meet, on, meet and greet on Wednesday, August the 10th, which will happen at 7 p.m. And that will be at the Wild Orchids Restaurant and Bar at the, at the Annadale Falls. The following day, which is Thursday the 11th, there would be a career development um, session, which starts, I think, around 9, and it would extend to about 1 o'clock. There are over 20 career um, areas that will be covered. And of course, there are um, alumni um, from the diaspora and also locally who will be presenters. And so there is an invitation extended to all of our um, graduates here and of course those who are members of our ongoing um, student population, current student population um, during that career development activity. And that career development activity would be followed by a sporting um, engagement following the career of course, development activity. And that happens from, I think, one o'clock onward, right? And it will take place at the, the Roy St. John's playing field, of course, affectionately referred to as Tantine playing field. So that, that very light um, engagement of sporting activity and, and competition between alumni will happen then. And then we have also planned a Batway Beach picnic on the Friday, August the 12th, and it's an all-day activity. All right, so that's on Batway Beach. And then there would be a, a Zoom forum, a call for action on national service on Friday the 12th as well, but that would be at 8, uh, 8 p.m. A dinner and dance on Saturday at Saturday, August the 15th at 7 p.m. and a special um, um, church service will be held on Sunday, August the 14th to bring the curtains down. Uh, the venue, of course, the church, to, I, I think it's, oh, actually, it's the Anglican Church on um, Church Street. So that's where that will take place. More information as it relates to the reunion activities will be posted on our GBSS Facebook page. To the graduates, also remember those of you who would have left your certificates in your seat after you would have um, recessed, you would return for, for those, okay, to connect. Remember that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we prepare now to have the recession of our graduating class GBSS graduating class 2022. Make it good. Make it look good. I'm going all over the world. Eh?
members of staff and the rest of us. Again, thank you very much, everyone, and have an enjoyable evening.